Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, I wanna show you a quick tip for using the curves tool in Lightroom. And with this photo here of this uh, wave crashing over these rocks, I've got this pretty intricate curve and I wanna explain how I arrived at this and why I chose to create the curve this way. First, here's the, uh, the difference between this curve. I wanted to get more detail and punch into the wave. So here's without the curve and here is with the curve. So it's fundamentally adding some contrast, but doing it in uh, more than just a typical classic S curve. So let me show you how I did this. Let me reset the curve to linear. Next, I'll activate this double headed arrow here, this little selection tool, and I'm just gonna be hovering over the photo. And what I want to do is I want to darken these like, deeper aqua colors. I wanna keep the really parts of the bright white protected. And then the areas that are somewhat, uh, you know, I'll call them a neutral tone, like they're somewhat sand color. Let's call those neutral gray. I wanna get those a little bit darker as well. So somewhere I'm brightening up some of the upper mid-tones and keeping the very brights in check, and then the lower mid-tones getting more darkness in them and tailoring it to this photo. Now notice as I'm hovering over the various spots in the photo, there is a point that is dancing around the curve. And I go into this very bright area, we can see that toward the upper end of the curve, that point is highlighted. If I hover over the darker aquas here, that tends to be in the mid-tones. And then this would also tend to be in the mid-tones. And what we can do is I'll click one time right now. That just set a point on the curve. Now notice there's a point on the curve. I'll do the same thing here. I want something in the upper area of the highlights because I want to protect things above that point. I want to make sure this is getting dark. That's pretty much the same area as my previous point. Let's take a look down in here. That's mid-tones. Now I've got some very deep shadows over in the rocks. I don't want to darken those further. I'll grab a point there. And that's gonna be enough for a starting area. So what have we done? We've set a few points on the curve. And these I'll kind of call like protection areas. I don't really want to change the low shadows. I don't really want to change things that are in the upper highlights. I want to darken the mid-tones if I pull this down a little bit, I'll pull it down very far. You can start to see where things are getting dark. And in particular, you know, these, these aquas and these waves are really starting to punch up. I don't want to go too far with that. And I have the freedom to bias this how I need to. And so if I want to take those mid-tones down a little bit, I may also want to brighten some of those brighter areas, but not, eh, not too much. We don't want to blow out these white caps here. And I still have the freedom to protect those shadows, pull them down ever so slightly. I can bias this a little farther to the deepest shadows so I can still darken the, these lower mid-tone areas. And same thing with highlights. Maybe we'll take this mid-tone area and nudge it, nudge it down just a little bit more to get a little more hint of fingers in this water. I can see the results before and after, you know, a much richer set of contrast controls, but leveraging that little selection double-headed arrow. So hover over the photo to get an idea of what types of tones are out there. And then for tones you want to change or protect, click once on them, set those points on the curve and use those as your basis to start adjusting a curve. So if you wanna go beyond the classic S curve, classic S curves are great by the way, but go ahead and use that uh, selection tool and have fun with it. My name is Scott Davenport, thanks for watching.